In this iMovie basics tutorial, I'm going to share with you all the essential features to start editing your videos today, and we'll do that right now. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Brian White, and welcome back to Video Zeus. If you want to learn how to spend less time making more videos, start by clicking that subscribe button now. All right, so now we're inside iMovie, and today I'm gonna to show you the essentials to editing your videos from a fairly beginner's stance, all the features you'll likely use to edit your videos. To get started, we'll click on the Create New button here, which gives us two options, Movie and Trailer. In this tutorial, we're going to create a movie. Trailer is a set of pre-made templates, and for the purpose of this tutorial, we want to start with a blank slate. It's important to note that iMovie has an auto-save feature built in so you never have to manually save your edits. In fact, if you try to save, you'll find no button to do so. Now what we're looking at here is our editing workspace, divided into a few panels. This area is where you can navigate to your footage. This area here is where you import your clips. This area over here is where you'll preview your video. And down here is the timeline. Let's import some media into our project. To do so, you can go up here to File, Import Media, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-I, or you can simply drag in clips from Finder. The drag and drop feature is quite nice. Either way you choose will work the same. Once you have imported your clips, they will appear in the clip bin here. You can drag your mouse over the clips to get a glimpse preview of the footage, and simply click on the clip to select it. Now, let's drag a clip into our timeline like so. So now we have our video there on the timeline. As you can see, it's quite small in size. So let's zoom in on the timeline by clicking on this button over here, which will magnify our timeline, making it easy to see the entire clip. You can then use this scroll bar down here to slide back and forth through the entire timeline. A couple things to take note of here on the timeline. As I scroll my mouse across the clip, you'll see this white line scroll with it. That is called the playhead. Now to play your clip on the timeline, you can simply press the spacebar. You can use the spacebar to play and pause your clip as needed. Additionally, you can use the keys J and L to scrub your footage in reverse or fast forward. Now a couple tools you'll use quite a bit are split and trim. To split a clip, simply navigate your playhead over the area you want to cut. Then use the keyboard shortcut Command B to split the clip. As you can see, it splits it from the original clip. Now you can also split the clip by clicking up in the menu, go to Modify, then Split Clip. But using the keyboard shortcuts will save you time in the long run. So once you have it split, you can delete the excess footage by clicking on it and then Delete. You can do the same to any other clips by placing your playhead over it, split here, then split there, and delete the dead space. Now, to trim a clip, you'll place your cursor over the edge of the clip, and you see these arrows appear. By clicking and dragging left or right, you can fine-tune your clip like so. So split, then trim, and you can edit your video like that. Now, directing our attention back up here where it says My Media, this is where your clips will live. You can certainly import more media, whether it be additional video clips, photos, graphics, audio, and music files. To the left of this is the Audio tab, where you can select from a variety of sound effects and music tracks to include in your video. Simply click and drag the audio into your timeline. You can then position this audio wherever you like on the timeline. Now, let's talk about audio for a second. You can adjust the volume of your audio clips by hovering over the audio and clicking and dragging up and down to increase or decrease the levels. To fine tune the audio levels, you can click up here on the speaker icon to have more control over the audio volume by dragging the slider back and forth. Let's go back to this panel over here and click on titles. Titles are helpful if you want to place text in your video whether it's on top of your clip or in front of it. Simply click and drag it down to your timeline. I'll place this lower third text on top of my video, then double click on the layer to open up the Title Tool Editor and start typing. You'll have a variety of font styles, color, and alignment options to format and customize your text as you see fit. 
If you want to have an intro slide to your video, you can drag a title and place it in front of your clips like so. Next is the backgrounds tab, which can be quite useful to place text on top of these backgrounds to add a little more flair to your title effects. Simply pick and drag a background onto your timeline like so. Then drag a title and place it on top of that background. Now the white text on top of this background looks a little too stark, so I'll click on my text layer then go over here and click on the title tool icon, which opens up the various options. Click over here to change the color, and there we go. Next thing we'll go to is transitions. Now, you have a slew of transitions here to choose from, and by placing your cursor over the transition, it will give you a preview of what that transition looks like. Now, you'll want to use these transitions sparingly. Don't overuse them and only use the transitions that naturally fit into your video. My favorite transitions to use are cross dissolve, cross blur, wipes, and slides. I think these are the most professional looking transitions, the others just look a little silly. To place a transition, simply drag and drop it between two clips. You can also modify the transition's duration by double clicking on the transition icon in your timeline, then adjusting the length of that transition. Working with photos inside iMovie can be a little tricky. First, you'll want to decide where your photo belongs in your timeline, whether you want to cut from a clip to a photo or do an overlay where the photo is on top of the video or do a picture in picture effect. A photo will default to a slow zoom in on a photo. That may or may not be the effect you're looking for. If you just want it to be a static image, you'll need to click up here on the cropping button and select fit to keep it still. One other feature that may be useful depending on the type of video you're creating is to record a voiceover inside iMovie. To do this, place your playhead at the beginning of the clip you want to narrate. Then click on the microphone button here and select which microphone you want to use. I'll use the built-in microphone for this example. Then when you're ready, click the record button which will then give you a 3 second countdown to begin your narration. And as you can see, this is my front porch with my lovely front door. Press the space bar or click to stop recording. And as you can see, we now have a voiceover track under our clip. You could adjust the volume accordingly and even position that track anywhere on the timeline you see fit. Now, before we wrap up this tutorial, I'll walk you through the video effects features inside iMovie. These effects can be found above the play window here. To activate, simply select a clip on your timeline, then click on the icons up here. The first one is the color balance tool, where you can adjust the overall color for your footage. Things like auto balance and white balance can help you dial your footage to true video colors. Next to that one is the color correction tool, where you can adjust the exposure of your image, brightness, contrast, etc. You can also tweak the saturation, whether making it brighter colors, maybe a faded look, or straight black and white. The cropping tool we've already discussed. The next is the stabilization tool, where you can help stabilize shaky footage. You can modify how much stabilization you want by using the slider here. Next to that is the volume tool, which we've already touched on. If you have speaking parts in your video, you can use the noise reduction tool to help decrease background noise or other nuances present in your audio recordings. Next is the speed tool, which gives you a variety of options to utilize, including fast forward and slow motion effects, creating freeze frames and even reversing a clip. Next to that, we have the filters tool, which allows you to add cool Instagram-like color filters to your footage and a slew of audio effects to choose from as well. Once you're finished editing your video, you'll want to export your video into a movie. To do this, you can go File, Share, or click on the Share icon in the upper right corner. I recommend exporting as a file first, then uploading to YouTube, Facebook, or wherever you want independently. I find you get a little more customization with your uploads when you do it this way. Now, depending on the length of your video, it could take 5 minutes or 50 minutes to export. You can view the progress of the export next to the share icon in the upper right corner by way of a circle icon. As it exports, the circle will begin to fill. If you haven't already downloaded my Before You Shoot guide, please follow the link in the show notes below. The guide will prove as a useful resource for each and every one of your video creations. 
If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to leave me a like. And if you want to watch more videos just like this one, then hit that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the release of our new videos. Once again, thanks for watching Video Zeus, where we help you spend less time making more videos.